It's been a long road to Omaha. What started as 64 is down to four, but only one can walk away with the trophy. This is their final chance to shine. We are resilient. We are fierce. We've survived and we've thrived. We won't flinch. We are strong, powerful, fearless. We are hunters. We came to make history. We are not leaving without the trophy. We're about to find out who these four teams are. Our first semifinal, San Diego and Texas. Not everybody gets to play on this stage, but if you do, you never forget it. Texas and San Diego joined by Louisville and Pitt, those two teams making back-to-back -back appearances in the national semifinal. By the end of the night, we know who will play for a national championship on Saturday. Let's go, it is time for semifinal volleyball. Courtney Lyle alongside indoor national champion, Beach Olympic bronze medalist, Holly McPeak. Texas, the number one overall seed. There's a heartbeat on this Texas team. The heart and soul, the Longhorns, it's Logan Eggleston. Logan Eggleston is a five-time All-American, the leading candidate for player of the year, but she's so much more than that. She's a selfless leader. In fact, she leads this NCAA tournament in aces, and she's been hitting with the best range of her career. They measured her jump just this week. She's jumping higher than ever in the last five years. That's scary for any opponent because Logan Eggleston has been fantastic. She graduated high school in three years to be a Longhorn at age 17, now in her fifth season, back in the national semifinals. Well, Katie George is going to be providing analysis from the sidelines. Look at the San Diego team, Katie. We have learned how much a transfer can impact a season. Yeah, Gabby Blossom has been massive. You know, the San Diego team has had a lot of weapons for a while, Courtney, but they needed an elite setter. They needed an elite facilitator. They needed Gabby Blossom, the grad transfer from Penn State, who has been so pivotal in San Diego's success this season. A couple of things to watch out for as you watch her this evening. Blossom will change the tempo of her sets depending on the hitters that she is setting. So for instance, she's gonna push a really fast ball out to Katie Lukes on the outside pin, but then delivers a different ball to Grace Froling or Brianna Edwards. That constant change of speed and tempo makes it really hard for opposing blockers to track. She's also one of the best out of system setters in the country. When she's on the run, she is fantastic. Her presence on this floor is one of the main reasons why the Toreros are in their first national semifinal. Yeah, what a get for San Diego out of the porter, portal. And now Gabby Blossom, a first team All-American, just the second in San Diego history. Yeah, they've had the weapons, but she is the facilitator, and it's been so fun to watch them grow with confidence. We talk about the portal, Holly. You look at Texas, they added 11 new players, got a handful of those out of the portal. Who have you been most impressed with that's new for Texas? Well, for Texas, you have to talk about Zoe Fleck. She and serve receive is nails, and she anchors that backcourt, and not only anchors it, but she helps lead those other players in serve receive. Zoe Fleck, the Big 12 Libero of the Year. That's her third conference Libero of the Year honor. And here's some of the impact transfers we're going to see in the national semifinals tonight. We mentioned Zoe Fleck for Texas. Also, Maddie Skinner, who actually won a national championship with Kentucky in this arena in 2020. Yeah, beating her team, her current team now, Texas. So big story, and she wants another ring. What a magical season it has been for San Diego. Jennifer Petri in her 24th season. She is the national coach of the year. They talked about in the spring they were not satisfied with how last year's tournament run ended. They lost in the first round, so they went to work on their culture. They did, and they did a big buy-in, and they spent the spring really working on how they could connect as a team, and they felt like by August, they were fine-tuning things heading into the season, and that gave them so much confidence. They've said all season long, why not us? Meanwhile, Jared Elliott, I loved his comment. Driving to the regional final, he said, I had tears in my car because I just don't want this run to end. I love this team so much. Anytime you're 
with a group that has that kind of chemistry, you don't want it to end and you're enjoying the journey and you can see it on the Texas side of the net. Texas looking to get back to the championship match. They've been there eight times. San Diego has never been there before. Terreros will serve first, and it will be Gabby Blossom. Zoe Fleck immediately tested. They go to the middle, and Kayla Caffey, and she is blocked by Layla Blackwell. Texas ran that middle attack, which is a high percentage play, but San Diego with a double block on that size pays off. And usually Texas's middles are so strong, and remember this Texas team first in the nation in hitting percentage, hitting 339. Sage Kahai and Torres passing it out to Phillips. And the swing coming there from Brianna Edwards, and it's blocked by Texas. In transition, Maddie Skinner and Kayla Caffey return the favor. Both these teams are going to feel each other out and try to find some weaknesses to attack. We mentioned Madison Skinner transferring in from Kentucky. What a get for Texas. Her serve has really elevated the Longhorns recently. Another middle attack. Layla Blackwell is there for the Toreros. Layla Blackwell has been putting up fantastic numbers, and she can go either way. Usually a middle attacker wants to go crossbody or away from her body. She can go anywhere. What do you think it's like for Gabby Blossom to set all these weapons that she has coming into this program? Well, we talked about how strong she is, but she's also got the weapons, and that makes her job really fun. Eggleston takes the pass. Sage back to Logan Eggleston, and it's long. Point to Reros. Logan Eggleston took a big swing, wants to start this match aggressive. No touch on the block there. San Diego has some fantastic defensive specialists that will rotate in. Maddie Allen, one of those. The dig, Torero stay alive. Zoe Fleck underneath it for the Longhorns. Molly Phillips behind the setter. San Diego in really good spots defensively. They have a scouting report. They know where Texas likes to attack that ball, but Molly Phillips too much on that one. San Diego on that 28 match winning streak. There was talk when the bracket came out, should San Diego be that number one seed? Well, guess what? They went to Stanford, they beat the number one seed, and they earned their first spot here in the national semifinal. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about it because San Diego doesn't have the most competitive conference, but I talked to Jennifer Petrie, and she said, look, we push each other every day. Every week would reset, set new goals, and it's really paid off in helping them push their game. Blossom will push it out to Katie Lukes. What did Gabby Blossom tell us? We still have haters and we're playing in a national semifinal. She was like, people can keep on hating, right? Because we're playing extremely well and these guys are so confident. You can just feel it from the court. Yeah, they've had that motto, Katie, of why not us? There's t-shirts in the stands here that say, why not San Diego? And I love that underdog role. There's nothing to lose and they're going to lay it all on the court. Katie Lukes was dug by Fleck. Free ball back to the Toreros. Blossom sends it up to her middle. Blackwell. And Eggleston is long. I love the fact that she's coming out swinging. I'm sure there's nerves at the start of this first set. But San Diego in good spots defensively. They're going to make her earn her points. That ends a 3-0 run by Texas. And Annie Benbow, the West Coast Conference Libero of the Year, serving goes after Eggleston. Off hands, and that'll be the first kill for the three-time Big 12 Player of the Year. And I'm sure that feels good. Couple errors to start this match, but finally gets a kill down the line for Texas. Kayla Akana, one of those transfers coming in from Nebraska. Really elevated Texas's back row play. Grace Froling from the right pin. Grace Froling can really affect a match. She's got tremendous size and can hit with really nice range. That time she went to that deep corner. There's no defender back there. She is a second team All-American this season, averaging just over three kills per set. She can not only go over top of the block because of her physical size right there, she cuts inside the block. 
My goodness, what a serve, too. See well, it? when you're at 6-5, I mean, the high contact point, are you kidding me? Nobody else is sending a serve over like that at Texas right now. I feel like she's hitting a flat laser beam with pace, and it's tough to pass. Emma Halter got underneath it. Still an out-of-system swing for Texas here. Blossom to Froling coming out of the back row, and Texas's block was ready. Good eye work by Asia O'Neill, number seven in white. Gabby Blossom is really deceptive when she runs this ball. She gets there, and you can't tell where she's going. Asia O'Neill makes a last-minute step to her left and gets that block. Here comes the Eggleston serve we talked about. She's got a cannon. This results in a free ball back to the Longhorns. Sage taking it, and it drops. San Diego relaxed a little bit, and Sage Kahaina Torres in the front row. She can attack that ball on a perfect pass. There was a time earlier in the season, Logan's serve went away for a little bit. It's back. It certainly is. Well, Jared Elliott, the head coach for Texas, gave her a little rest and gave her time to get refocused on her skills. I went just long. Remember Logan Eggleston, the Texas leader in career aces. She's also the Big 12 leader in career aces. Keep in mind, guys, as good as Gabby Blossom is, one thing she can't control is her height. She is 5'9". She's now in the front row. And Jared Elliott told us, with Maddie Skinner going against her, they want to try to exploit it. They'll go to Oasis O'Neal on the slide. And there's going to be a center line violation as O'Neal stepped over that line on the floor when she landed on the slide. If you're Texas, you want to attack the smallest blocker on the court. And right now, that's Gabby Blossom. So I'd like to see SKT for Texas pushing that ball to the left pin and Maddie Skinner. Katie Luke's going at Maddie Skinner. She will give it up to Maddie. Bust up the block. So important to know what's going on defensively on the other side of the net. And Gabby Blossom is in an area that they want to attack. I talked to Coach Jen Petrie, and she said, look, we're going to slide some defenders behind her. We know they want to attack her. Here's Asia O'Neill, a first team All-American this year. Brianna Edwards will get the touch call. Flat with pace, and that's tough. She is up there. Good tool in her toolbox. We've got Brianna Edwards and then Katie Lukes working that left pen for San Diego. Both of those players averaging over 3.3 kills per set. Makana handles it out to Sage to Skinner, throws it down! And that's the mismatch Texas is looking for. If they pass the ball like that, they want to attack Gabby Blossom, number 13 in blue on the right side of your screen. And because of the pace of that set, look at that gap in between. Not only can Maddie Skinner sky and go over top of the block, it's nice when you can go right between those blockers. So it flies in. They'll go back to Skinner, and why not? Three sets in a row going in the direction of Blossom. Zoe Fleck started this off with a great dig. Kathy gets there in transition in the middle. She's available, but they go back to that pin. Service error. We are playing 25. You have to win by two. Winner will get either Louisville or Pitt in the national championship match on Saturday. Ninth time we've been tied here in the opening set. Gaffey swings long, and Texas, who is normally a very strong offensive team, some attacking errors early. Yeah, already five hitting errors, and mostly long, just not getting on top of the ball offensively. Both teams hitting under 100, service error by Gabby Blossom. Look, this is a big stage. There's a lot of nerves. Yesterday is a big day for these teams. You meet with the media, you go through our tease shoots, something that San Diego has never done. Yeah, and I feel like the first set, it's, it's, there's just so many nerves, right? You're trying to figure it out, and I feel like we're seeing that from both teams offensively with the errors. 
Blossom has to throw only one hand up for that. It's going to drop in play and benefit the Longhorns. How about Kayla Caffey, number 28 in white. Really nice handwork on the net on that tight ball. Gabby Blossom, one hand set. Good timing by Caffey to press over the net. And Kayla Caffey, the transfer from Nebraska, started her career at Missouri and now playing for Texas. Rolling with the out of system swing. SKT to Eggleston. And there's a net violation on San Diego. Texas going a lot to their left side. Logan Eggleston, the recipient there, even though she's got Grace Froling, one of the biggest blockers, usually in front of her. There you see Blackwell. Blossom has to hustle. Froling will step in. Free ball coming back to Texas. Sage to Molly Phillips. Benbo with the secondary set to Brianna Edwards. She does get through. I watched Brianna Edwards practice today, and she literally left dents in the floor. Heavy arm, and she can score for San Diego. Look at her come inside, and that ball goes inside the blocker between she and the net. Jen Petri told us she has really developed in this tournament. They told her, look, you can't be conservative out of system. We have got to have you rip the volleyball. An attacking error on Caffey. Both teams want to turn up the service pressure, get their setter off the net, so their offense becomes predictable and the blockers know where to go. This is Maddie Allen tied up at 13. Go after Texas's pens as they serve Eggleston. She gets the swing. This time they'll try the right side with Phillips offhand. Molly Phillips is just so consistent. She is. They just call her the surgeon, the way she dissects and attacks the entire court with precision. In their last five matches, Molly, she's only had four attacking errors. Yeah, and she's been terminal at the same time. That's not easy to do. Now hitting 393 in the tournament is Molly Phillips. Some to Katie Lukes, boom! Gabby Blossom pushes that ball out to Katie Lukes with pace. Saw them working on that earlier. Lukes is so good when she gets that fast pace to the ball. Look at her attack down that line. But it also takes a great deal of trust, does it not? Because Katie Lukes actually has to start her approach before the ball leaves Gabby's hands. Just excellent trust between those two. Great point. And then Katie Lukes comes up with a block. San Diego is the first to 15 in our first semifinal here in Omaha. By far, this has been the best season in San Diego Torero volleyball history. They went undefeated in the West Coast Conference. They're a number two seed in the tournament, made their fifth regional semifinal appearance. They had never advanced past the regional semifinal. That was until this season. Also made it past the regional final for the first time. They've won 28 straight matches. That is the longest win streak this entire season in the nation. It's still active for the Toreros. Their head coach, Jennifer Petri, is the national coach of the year. And she told us, look, I've always had great players on my team. I don't think I've ever had this many great players at the same time. Yeah, and there's a lot of experience on her side as well. And then you tie in Gabby Blossom, and it's a great unit. Asian O'Neal in the middle. Well, that's exactly what Texas talked about and wanted to see coming out of that timeout. As you guys can imagine, Jarrett Elliott saying, hey, let's just take a deep breath. We're playing really good defense, but we have seven hitting errors. It's on us. We're playing good defense, staying in rallies, but just good, crisp contacts at the net. And I think we're seeing some nerves on both sides, Katie. Both teams no with, yeah, with low hitting percentages. No team has led by more than two points. Grace Froling will take it and terminate on the right side. We saw Grace Froling attack that deep corner. That time she saw the middle blocker late, hit a super sharp angle. Really impressive hitting range from her. Froling has had double figure kills their last seven matches. Alter to Sage to Eggleston down the line. Sage giving it up to Eggleston again. This time some more power behind it, but it's wide. Texas in a rotation where Sage Kahaina Torres, the setter, is in the front row. Asia O'Neill will run that slide behind, and then that leaves Logan Eggleston on that left pin. 
And if they can get the pass, that slide for Asia O'Neal is one of the best plays in Texas's offense. But they're looking for the mismatch against Gabby Blossom defensively at the net. They went there. They're saying it was touched by Texas, Point San Diego. Jared Elliott is going to go down and talk to the down official. Gabby Blossom says she wiped that off Logan Eggleston. Little swagger as she walks back to the team. And I see a touch there. This is a play that they can challenge, and Jarrett Elliott is going to use his first challenge. Each team will get two challenges. If you're correct in your challenge, you get to keep it. So the original call was that Texas touched it. They're going to go back and look at this. The point went to San Diego. The look we had, it certainly looked like Gabby Blossom was going up to Joust, throws it. Ooh. Not sure if it got the left arm of Logan Eggleston or not. And it's got to be obvious that it didn't for them to overturn this call. It definitely wasn't fingers, but Blossom is down on the forearm in terms of height against Eggleston. Joe Gustafson is our R2. Hard to see. You don't get finger movement because it's down on her forearm. I don't know if that look you can. Tough to see. No definitive touch now that I've looked at it. Tight ball. Nope. That's a great angle. That's a great angle. I, I love that, that angle, and I did not see a touch on the, that replay. We'll see if our down official agrees. Is there enough to overturn this? So they reverse this call, no touch on it. Texas will get to keep the challenge. They have two remaining, and they will get the point. Look, that's big, too, in how close this first set has been. I mean, it's been one team led by two, then the other. It's been back and forth. It's definitely been back and forth, but Texas with too many hitting errors in this first set. Yeah, eight hitting errors for Texas, hitting 042, a team that hits 339 on the season. In San Diego, just a little better with six. Eggleston serve is long. One of the things that Texas does really well is serves tough, getting teams out of system, but they've been missing serves here as well. Yeah, that was a key piece to their success in the regional in Austin last weekend. I think Maddie Allen's a little too young to have seen the Matrix, but she just pulled out the stops there to let that ball go sailing by. <laughs> Kelly Price on the serve. Service error. Both teams want to put that pressure on, but there's that fine line between keeping it in the court and missing. We've seen a total of five service errors already in set number one here in our first semifinal. Pitt and Louisville will take the court 30 minutes after this one concludes. Blossom running Haley Stoner off of one foot. And Gabby Blossom has just this quick flip, and she gets it back to Haley Stoner so quick. Look at her hands, how quick that comes out. And then Maddie Skinner all alone as a block, and Stoner beats her down the line. You know, in talking to Gabby yesterday, she told us one of the things when I first stepped into the San Diego gym in January was, wow, I got to learn to set way faster. And that's hard to do. She's a grad student coming after four years playing at Penn State. She has to learn to quicken up her offense. That's a big challenge. She's done pretty well at it. She's absolutely <laughs> responded in the best way. That swing is going to be wide for Brianna Edwards. I like what Blossom told us, too, was, you know, I took a minute to get to know my teammates. I wanted to hear their voice. And then I found the right time to insert my own voice. And that started in the spring. It was so important for Jen Petrie to get her there in January. Well, it's helpful, Courtney, when she can come into a program and they have veteran leaders like Katie Lukes 
like Libro, Annie Binbo. They've been in the program for five years, so they could show her, hey, this is how we do things. This is our culture. Get acclimated, feel comfortable, build relationships, and then assert your personality and become our leader. Yeah, absolutely. And she has fit just right in. Tooling the block, Texas. San Diego is so physical defensively at the net. Look at the size of this San Diego block, but that one goes out of bounds for the Texas point. Maddie Skinner, no attacking error. She's four for four, and she'll be serving both teams at 20. It's a race to 25. Edwards. Off the block and down for the Longhorns. Kayla Caffey and Logan Eggleston that time together. Very well-formed block. Paying pain off for Texas. No seam in that block. Texas with four blocks. You know, we mentioned Maddie Skinner. We've seen her with four kills, no attacking errors. She transferred in from Kentucky where she won a national championship. And when she entered the transfer portal, Jared Elliott reached out to her. But her response may be a little surprising to some. He said, I'm saving this text message for her senior day, but he's allowed us to share it with you today. She said, hi, Jared, thank you so much for reaching out. I have so much respect for you and your program, but I want to be upfront that I don't see myself coming back to Texas. She's a Texas native. If that changes, I'll be in touch. She told him no. And he was relentless. He did not give up. He knew that if he could get her on campus, the university would sell itself. It's been incredible to watch Maddie Skinner grow in this program. She wanted to train her full game. She's a third team All-American this year. Where has she impacted Texas the most? I think just in the buy-in and the culture and the fact that she comes to practice every day to learn and get better. These are some of the best players in the country, but they never give up. They want to learn every day. Now, there was a time, too, Logan Eggleston was taken out of playing six rotations. Maddie Skinner stepped into that role. She did a great job in the back row. She certainly did. She was dominant hitting out of the back row, and her passing skills improved as well. So she's been impressive, and they can flip Logan Eggleston and Maddie Skinner in the lineup anytime. I guarantee you, too, if you ever go to a Texas practice, you're going to see Maddie Skinner, Logan Eggleston, and Zoe Fleck stay late to work on their passing. It happens almost every time. Guys, I was checking in in San Diego's huddle, and I'm just so impressed with Jen Petrie's calmness, the way that she talks to her players as this defense has picked up for Texas at the net. She said, you got to expect the ball to come to you in coverage situations. We've got to be better covering in the last few points of this first set. Anytime you play a team like Texas, it's so physical at the net. They've now inserted Bella Bergmark, known for her blocking for Texas in the middle. You have to cover your hitters to give them that freedom to be more aggressive and swing. Yeah, Bergmark number five in white for Texas. Rolling, this time swinging from the left side. Phillips is going to set that. San Diego wanted a double. Rolling, take two. Saved by Fleck. Sage to Eggleston. Long with no touch, point to Reros. Logan Eggleston trying to find a way to beat that big block of San Diego that's in front of her. It's been a tough, tough start for Logan Eggleston, a five-time All-American, just two kills, but hitting in the negative. Holly, do you think that she's running from the block that's in front of her? She's so good at tooling. I'm surprised we haven't seen her try to tool the block in front. Yeah, I think she's trying to find a way to attack the block at this point and hasn't figured it out yet. There she went after it a little bit. Tech San Diego able to recover. And then they go through Texas's block with Katie Lukes, the third team All-American and the conference player of the year. Katie Lukes gets on the ball so quickly. She beats teams with speed. Watch her swing through that scene. Court vision is excellent. Texas calls a timeout as Katie Lukes and San Diego up 22 to 21. Remember, going to 25, you have to win by two. It was really fun to talk to Katie Lukes yesterday. You know, she started her career just playing three rotations for San Diego, and Jennifer Petri told us, I am so proud of the work that she has put in to be the player she is, to be the conference player of the year playing six rotations. Yeah, I, I don't think people understand how hard it is to become a six rotation player out on the court, taking every serve and being part of that serve receive first contact. It's everything to run your offense through you. 
Well, we have a moment. want to let you know Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC. You can catch the women's college basketball. Stanford hosting Tennessee. There is a great article by M.A. Vopel on ESPN.com right now about Cameron Brink for Stanford. Highly recommend that, that read. She's averaging 12 points a game, seven rebounds a game to lead Stanford. You can see that matchup, Stanford and Tennessee, coming up Sunday at 3 Eastern on ABC and, of course, on the ESPN app. 22-21, timeout called by Texas, playing to 25 here in the opening set of our first semifinal. We've seen some nerves creep in, both of these teams hitting under 100. You see both assistants, David Hunt for Texas. And then Alfie, ref for San Diego, giving the team some advice defensively on how to slow down their opponents. We have had 16 ties and 10 lead changes here in set one. But both teams hitting for extremely low numbers. Below 100, you don't see that from these type of elite teams. San Diego, during that win streak, they've only dropped 14 sets. Remember, they have the longest active win streak in the nation at 28 matches. There goes Logan Eggleston, just her third kill today. Texas in system, perfect pass from freshman Emma Halter. And look at Logan Eggleston get on top of that ball for Texas. Zoe Fleck. Benbow, nice pass. They can go to the middle. Layla Blackwell. I told you she hits with so much range, and San Diego takes care of this pass right in Gabby Blossom's hands. Good turn away from Asia O'Neill. And that's the West Coast Conference Libero of the Year, and Annie Bembo, number two in the light blue jersey. Froling. Eggleston does get the touch. Logan Eggleston is feeling her way into this match. She's getting on top of it more. That time finding some good hand contact in the San Diego block. So here comes Kayla Akana in the first round of this tournament. She had a career high seven aces in one match. That one's coming back. Point San Diego as they call Asia O'Neill for going over and blocking the set. Gabby Blossom is allowed to go up and set that ball and they're saying that Asia O'Neill interrupted that. Tight pass. Gabby Blossom trying to bring that ball back to her hitter Stoner in the middle. Set point San Diego. Tied at 24, you have to win by two. Wouldn't have it any other way, right? Right, this is how you start a national semifinal. Gabby Blossom in the front row for San Diego. Service error by Eggleston. She's gone long a handful of times tonight. That extra adrenaline beam in that national semifinal is definitely a factor. Kylie Price is going to check back in, number three for San Diego to serve. Second set point, Toreros. Sage to Skinner. Tied at 25. And the trend continues attacking. At Gabby Blossom, San Diego coach Petri said, we're going to slide some defensive players over into that line to try and protect that side of the court. Keep in mind, guys, Katie Lukes did not check back into the game to pass Kylie Prize in service Eve now. It's going back over. O'Neal saved it with one arm. It'll be a bump set to Edwards through the block and third set point to Reros. Brianna Edwards loves to swing at that ball. 14 in blue. 
I told you she left some dents in the floor earlier. That one rattles through the block of Bergmark of Texas. Service error, we go to 26 all. I love the calm look on the face of Gabby Blossom and the way she's leading her team. Blossom's gonna push it to Edwards. Using that Texas block again, there is Brianna Edwards. It's a fourth set point, San Diego. San Diego attacking the scene with the tip. San Diego is now out of substitutions. Keep that in mind as we move forward, if Texas is able to even it again. So this is who they're stuck with on the floor. Fleck is gonna bump set Phillips on the left side. Benbo, what a dig! Phillips again! San Diego's block prevails, and the Toreros take the opening set in their first semifinal appearance. What a way to open up the semifinal. A marathon in the first set at San Diego, taking it 28-26. Set two, coming up. San Diego taking the opening set 28-26 over the number one overall seed, the Texas Longhorns. That is just the fifth time this season that Texas has lost the opening set. Logan Eggleston, we saw her struggle in that first set. Four kills, but she hitting zero and also three service errors. Yeah, head coach Jared Elliott just trying to get her settled, get her in the right mindset. I'm sure there's a lot going through her mind right now, but she has to be present and, and tackle what's in front of her. And as Logan was having that conversation with Jared Elliott, guys, Asia O'Neill completely took over Texas's huddle. She asked her teammates, do you guys think that we just played well? And they all shook their heads no, and she said, and it was that close. We had a really bad first set, and it was still that close. She said, the time is now. We got to have more urgency, but we got to play our brand of volleyball, which is clean volleyball, usually speaking. Yeah, absolutely. Seeing the 11 attacking errors by Texas in the opening frame, I mean, that is not something we're used to seeing from the Longhorns. The Toreros, it took four set points, but they got it done in that first set. And it's gonna be a net violation on San Diego. What did you like about San Diego in the first set? I thought they just came out fearless, right? They were in good spots defensively. They showed that they're big at the net, some really nice blocking, and I love the leadership of Gabby Blossom. Blossom running Blackwell on the slide. Nope. Jared Elliott told us about Maddie Skinner being a shutdown blocker on the left side, and you see why she was way over the net defensively for Texas. Well, they've played with her some, maybe swinging in the opposite. She's really swung on both pins throughout her career at Kentucky and also here at Texas. Texas late on their press, and San Diego able to score there and serve receive. This is our first semifinal of the night. We will have another one coming up for you 30 minutes after the conclusion of this match. It'll be Louisville and Pitt, both of those teams making back-to-back -back appearances in the semis. Still going. It is Town Point San Diego. Brianna Edwards so big at the net with Layla Blackwell, number seven, just an anchor. Watch the block movement in the hand press back into the court for number 14 in blue. And Brianna Edwards, one of those transfers, spent four seasons at Indiana. Service pressure from Gabby Blossom. That's something usually Texas does to their opponents. But right now, San Diego really focused on doing the same right back at them. And it's a 3-0 run for the Toreros. Overpass. Clean up, Grace Froling. 
Back-to-back -to -back tough serves by Blossom in San Diego on a roll. All the momentum on their side of the net. Skinner chases it. Edwards, tip. Molly Phillips off speed. Edwards again, and there's Zoe Fleck. Molly Phillips just willing that to be a kill. We saw fantastic digs in that last rally. Katie Lukes for San Diego, and then Zoe Fleck setting up Molly Phillips for that kill to end the long rally. Look at this dig by Zoe Fleck getting under and lifting that ball. And we talk so much about the pins, so much about the front row players. We have some amazing DSs, some amazing littles with all four teams here in Omaha. There goes Fleck again. Eggleston off the block. Blossom. Bumps up by Bimbo. Sage to the middle with Caffey. To Eggleston. Blossom using Lukes out of the back row. Down the line goes Eggleston. And Logan Eggleston getting a little bit more brave with her offense. That time, San Diego reaches in to take her angle, and she attacks that line. What a rally. We're starting to see these teams settle in. A little bit of nerves in the opening set. They're looking more and more comfortable, though. Down the line serve for Maddie Skinner. And San Diego is able to terminate thanks to Blackwell. Blackwell, one on one in the middle, hits with nice range, and she is tough to stop. Zoe Fleck in that left back position, and not even she, one of the best defenders in the country, can come up with it. Jennifer Petri talked to us about how much Gabby Blossom has helped Layla Blackwell elevate her game. She's going behind the setter for the first time. She just kind of got a clean slate with a new setter to start over with no expectations, believing that she can do everything. They'll say it did touch the block. Molly Phillips, her fourth kill. The entire San Diego team looking at their coach saying that ball did not come over the net. Please challenge. Uh, Jennifer Petri has that green challenge card. They can go back and see if the Texas hit touched the San Diego block. Originally, they said it did. First time that San Diego is using a challenge tonight. Not sure if that ball touched. Grace rolling through the net. Or maybe got her elbow. The call live was that it did touch the block and they let them play on. Original call that it was touched by the San Diego block. They let them play on, so it has to be obvious for them to overturn this that it was not touched by San Diego. Offensively, the numbers are coming up in the second set. San Diego hitting 200, Texas hitting 167. So Texas will get to keep this point. San Diego will go down to one challenge. Unless we go to a fifth set, they will get an additional challenge. I absolutely love her game. Impressive, and Maddie Allen for San Diego just controlling that pass. Gabby Blossom has so many options and weapons. For only a second team All-American, uh, Coach Petri called her a quiet leader, but when she speaks, you know everybody's listening. SKT backside to Molly Phillips. 
Good isolation behind. Molly Phillips one-on-one -on -one is tough to stop. Big seam in the block right there for Texas. Quick flick goes wide enough and a little chop down the line. It was right in front of Annie Benbo. Phillips rotates out. Luke's with the pass. Luke's will get the swing. Has to reach back behind herself to get it. Eggleston readjusting to the back corner. And that's just a smart decision by Logan Eggleston. Timing was a little bit off. She adjusts, tries to get her feet there. Deep line over Gabby Blossom's head. You see her settling in a little more? Definitely. I think she's getting a little bit more creative with her offense. And a little bit more calm. Texas targeting Katie Lukes. Rolling, almost automatic. And over the top. Yeah. Texas is one of the most physical blocking teams at the net, but Grace Rolling on that last play went over the top. Watch this high point of contact. Grace Froling standing at 6-5. Here comes O'Neal on the slide. Asia O'Neal led the country in hitting percentage. If you're Texas, you want to get her the ball more in serve-receive if you can. What do her teammates call her? The slide queen because she's just so effective and lethal off of one foot behind. Doesn't matter where it is behind Sage's head, right off of her shoulder or all the way to the antenna. She just has nails. I got two setters here. You ladies think that's fun to set for SKT? Set Asia O'Neal on that slide? Both, both teams have incredible weapons. I would love to set for either. Yeah, I was going to say, it's an absolute luxury what yeah. these two women have before them. <laughs> so a little conversation, but they will play on. Grace rolling out of the back row before she subs out. She has been so impressive offensively. Look at her go at that right back defender, Akona for Texas. Six kills for Grace Froling hitting 357. Tipped over by Skinner. Swung at, saved by Lukes. Edwards. Credit that point to Katie Lukes in the backcourt for San Diego. Diving dig in what appeared to be an easy Texas point. And that's why they're here. That relentless coverage, the ability to just keep balls alive with their pursuit. It paid huge dividends in the regional final. They went to five sets against Stanford, who was a number one seed in this tournament. Maddie Skinner attacking down that line and Gabby Blossom. Even though San Diego has a defender there, they can't come up with it. Skinner with six kills. Logan Eggleston with six kills to lead the Longhorns. Gabby Blossom, call her own number. But if you're Texas, that's a missed blocking assignment. You always have to say setters in the front row in no blocker has their hands up in or in front of her. 5'9", put some respect on my yeah. name. <laughs> that one just dropped by Stoner. Skinner getting on top of that ball for Texas, and the trend continues. Sage Kahina Torres going at Gabby Blossom every opportunity she can. We saw Texas try to do that in that first set, taking advantage of block. Blossom being a little bit smaller block. Benbo will step in for the secondary set of Edwards. It's wide. 
defensively, this San Diego team pushes each other in the gym, and you can see they are not intimidated by Texas. Brianna Edwards. And it goes off of Zoe Fleck. Edwards, eight kills now to lead the Toreros. In that time, Edwards was out of system, but took a big rip at it, and it got away from the Texas defense. I want to go back to the point that you just made, Holly, too, about the level in the gym for San Diego. Same thing for Texas. These programs have so much talent. I mean, their practices have to be so intense. And both coaches have told us it's helped elevate their game and a huge part of their success this season. If you want to be the best team in the country, you have to push each other every day in practice. So that A side, B side, is really important in the practice gym. Three aces for San Diego, none for Texas. Molly Phillips, give her the volleyball and give her her sixth kill. Texas loading up that right side defensively. Look at Zoe Fleck cutting off that pass and then Molly Phillips able to attack that line with a late block in front of her. Rolling, changing it up, a light touch on that. Phillips this time back on the right, her home base. Eggleston coming in. Bimbo, get there! Oh, but it's long. Annie Bimbo, my goodness. And she just slides into that defensive spot and controls that beautifully for San Diego. Slides right to her left, pops it up, and San Diego got a swing but missed it long. Annie has talked about that San Diego is her dream school, and this just makes it even better, making history with the Toreros, their first semifinal appearance. Tooling the block, Brianna Edwards. The location and precision of Gabby Blossom in the way she runs the San Diego offense, she puts her hitters in really nice positions to score. Here's Maddie Allen. She's had some really nice serves and nice touches for the Toreros in the back row. She'll just step into secondary set Katie Lukes. Swing is wide. San Diego out of system, but Katie Lukes goes up with a big aggressive swing, just misses. Texas is the first to 15 here in our national semifinal. San Diego leading up a set. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship is brought to you by the Santa Clauses. Stream all episodes now only on Disney+. Plus. Omaha, Nebraska. This has been the goal for every team in the nation, and only four make it here. Our first semifinal, we're in set number two. San Diego trailing by two after they took the opening set. Courtney, I was checking in in the San Diego's huddle and Jim Petrie told her team in out of system high ball situations let's not try to avoid the blockers it's resulting in errors let's try to go off the hands use the block to our advantage I like that and that's when hitter coverage comes into play giving the hitters confidence to really go after it Luke's is going to tip over that Texas block Phillips is going to use the San Diego block Logan Eggleston came all the way to the middle of the court to pick up that tip, so that kind of takes her out as an attacker. Quick ball to Molly Phillips paying off. This is the first three-point lead by either team tonight. You want a close first semifinal? We've got it. Froling. Fleck with the save. They've been going to Phillips a lot. What a beautiful angle by Molly Phillips. And it came right at us, right? Great hand control. That was like a cut shot on the beach. Really nice hand contact. She saw the opening. Gabby Blossom steps into the middle of the court. She takes it sharp. Molly Phillips, she has been huge for Texas. Eight kills and a timeout is called by San Diego. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship continues with the national final. It's Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. For more information on NCAA Women's Volleyball, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. 
It has been a five to one run by Texas. Three of those points from Molly Phillips. Eight kills hitting 316. She has been the hot hitter for Texas. And sometimes opponents focus on Skinner, O'Neill, Eggleston, and then Molly Phillips gets some freedom to attack and score. Grace Froling, miscommunication, Halter is gonna give everything she has to get it right back over the net. Here comes Katie Luke, still alive! Still going! The defense! And a solo stop! Buckle up, Layla Blackwell! Are you kidding me? Relentless. Grace Froling gets an arm, just pops it up enough to get it back over. And then Blackwell solo block in the middle to end that rally. Wow! The adrenaline level just went way up inside the gym in Omaha. The effort defensively. I mean, defense wins games, and those types of plays can really stop the momentum on the other side of the net. I mean, look, you can't just be a great offensive team or a great serving team. You've got to be a well-rounded team, great defense, great offense to get to this point, and that's what we're seeing on both sides. Froling will readjust. One hand is all O'Neill needed. Asia O'Neill, I work. So important. Seeing what your hitter's doing. She gets there, sees it's a tip, throws it down. Her story is incredible. She has had two open heart surgeries, the most recent one coming in January of 2020, and here she is. Came back out on the court that following season. Free ball back to San Diego. Blossom to Luke's down the line, dug up by Akana. Rolling with a pokey. Eggleston turns it. Maddie Allen in pursuit. Sage to O'Neill. How fun is this? Every time extended rallies because of the fantastic defense. Gabby Blossom had two good digs in that rally for San Diego and then going to Asia O'Neill to finish things off for Texas. Wow, we talk about the big names. Logan Eggleston, Maddie Skinner, Asia O'Neill, Molly Phillips today in the semifinals, leading Texas with eight kills, and she's hitting so well at 315. And she's an All-American honorable mention. She can score very low air attacker, and she's having a really good night tonight for Texas. She's just crafty. She's such a smart player. Jarrett Elliott told us they call her the silent assassin. But kudos to Sage for going to her as much as she has and allowing Logan Eggleston to find her way throughout this match. She had a couple of uncharacteristic, unforced errors early, and so Sage decided, hey, I'm going to utilize Molly Phillips and let her go off because so much of the attention, as you mentioned, is on those marquee hitters, and this has really allowed Molly Phillips to lead the charge for these Longhorns. I agree, and that's one of the benefits of having a deep team, all those weapons. If someone's struggling, you have lots of other weapons that you can go to. So timeout here by San Diego. Sunday coming up, you can catch a double header, header from the Basketball Hall of Fame Women's Showcase on ESPN at 1 p.m. Eastern. It'll be Florida State and UConn. And then at 3 p.m. Eastern, Iowa State and Villanova. This Florida State team, they score a lot of points. They're seventh in the nation in points per game. They'll be facing a UConn team. Still no AZ Fudge. She's dealing with that knee injury. But you can see them in action coming up on Sunday. San Diego took the first set 28-26. We saw a lot of nerves on both sides, especially for Texas, who had 11 attacking errors in set one. Two attacking errors here in set two for the Longhorns. Definitely cleaning things up. And it's a 3-0 run. Katie Lukes used the block. Texas 
had to get out there so quick because Luke's goes fast out to the pin with that pace, and that's how she tries to beat them with speed. Disciplined block right there for Texas. Four straight points now. Akana continues to serve. This one goes wide. Grace Rowling leads his team in service aces, and you'll see why. High point of contact, and she gets after it from the service line. Alter places it right above Sage's head. They can go to O'Neal. Here comes Froling out of the back row, rolls it down the chain. When I talked to Jen Petri, to Petri, excuse me, today for San Diego, she talked about, look, we don't have to stuff them every time, but we need good defensive touches with our blocks. And that's what they got on that last play. San Diego, great opportunity. And they run Haley Stoner on the slide, it's wide. Haley Stoner so quick behind the setter, trying to attack that line, just missing wide. This is a two-hitter rotation for San Diego. Gabby Blossom's in the front row, but Grace Froling available out of the back row to attack. They go after Lukes. Since Blossom on the run, there's Froling out of the back. Maddie Skinner touching the block. Yeah, Maddie Skinner with kill number eight. Logan Eggleston able to get Texas out of system, and then Maddie Skinner attacking down that line over Blossom. You're seeing that depth for Texas pay off today. Different people stepping up at different times. They've tried to test it as much as they can this season to make sure they're ready for any situation. Sage is going to win the joust at the net in a set point, Texas. That time, Sage Kahina Torres ready to battle at the net, went up very aggressive to win that joust. Pass by Benbo. Luke's down the line. SKT to Maddie Skinner with an exclamation point. Texas in set two on a 4 0 run. We're playing at least four sets here in our opening semifinal. Texas so much cleaner in that second set, hit 333 in San Diego. They held them to 0 0.077. Uh, just two attacking errors for Texas in that set. Meanwhile, San Diego had eight. So after the Toreros win the opening set 28 to 26, Texas is able to respond with a 25 to 16 win in set two. Jared Elliott is standing by with Katie. Thanks, Courtney. Jared, we saw a lot of errors there in set one. What did you think of your team's response? Well, we were just super anxious and made a lot of errors. As we said, I think we had 13 or 14. So we just told them we got to keep coming at the court and and do a better job blocking with our hands. I thought they're, they're coming out of block hard, and uh, we started getting some good block touches towards the end of that game and transitioning. Logan garners so much attention. What did you think of the ability from Molly and Maddie to go off? Huge, right? We got the matchup on the setter with Maddie. We knew that. Um, but Molly's slicing and dicing like she always does, and it's been huge for us. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Courtney. Texas has evened it up. We'll at least play four sets here in semifinal number one. The stars are out in Omaha tonight. Two spots in that championship match are up for grabs. This one hasn't disappointed so far. Even at a set apiece here in Omaha, the national semifinal, Texas and San Diego. What a first two sets. Wow, Texas in set number two on a 4 0 run. Courtney Lyle and Holly McPeak with you. Katie George also on our team. And it was impressive to see Texas's response. And they've talked to us about weathering the storm. And it was going to be interesting, too, to see how San Diego, a new team to this environment, was going to respond. Well, they fought back all season long. This is only a second, second set that they've lost all season. So they know how to respond. This is a mature group. And I don't think they're going to give up. They played fantastic defense.
Absolutely not. Remember, San Diego's motto, why not us? They're part of this new look semifinals that we have. The four teams here in Omaha. We'll see Louisville and Pitt coming up. Three of the four semifinal teams have never won a national championship, Texas being the only one that's won an NCAA title. And it's the first time that we haven't had a Pac-12 or a Big Ten team in the national semifinal. We're seeing more parity. We are in ACC with big representation between Pitt and Louisville here, and then seeing a team like San Diego at the West Coast Conference. Yeah, we are going to see, because Pitt and Louisville play each other in our second semifinal, we're going to see for the first time an ACC team in that national championship match which will be on Sunday at 8 Eastern over on ESPN2. But we're at least going to get four sets in this one. And now we saw Texas's response. It is San Diego's turn to respond, and they've got plenty of weapons to do it. Yeah, I think Texas served extremely well. They were able to get San Diego out of system, and, and Texas just played a lot cleaner. So if San Diego can clean up their serve, receive, and get back in system, they can be right back in this match. Texas cleaned up their hitting for sure in set number two. They had 11 attacking errors in set number one, just two in the second set and hit 333 in that set. Jennifer Petri, the head coach of San Diego, is with Katie. Thanks, Courtney. You guys had a conversation back in the locker room. What did you tell your team? We, you know, we needed to slow it down a little bit and that we lost the momentum that we had. But really, um, it comes down to the passing. They're serving us high and hard. We need to pick a side so that we can keep that ball forward, open up some options. I think our um, out of system swings could have been smarter, a little high, hard, um, not so much angle. We made a few unforced errors, but we're going to clean that up this next game and stay after it. Thanks for the time. When she talks about their out of system swings, what did you see in that regard for San Diego? Well, that's what I was talking about. The set was coming from off the net. They've got a big block in front of them, and they were able, they were not able to score. They were hitting out, made some unforced hitting errors that they didn't make in the first set because they were in system. Maddie Skinner coming out of the break with a little boom. And it looks like Jared Elliott might have spun the dial, just one for a different matchup. And look who's in the middle right now for Texas. Bella Bergmark has come in, number five in white. We've seen them go back and forth between Kayla Caffey in the middle and Bergmark. Eggleston. And that's what Bella Bergmark's in there for defense, but Logan Eggleston set up that block. San Diego out of system, they became predictable. Texas able to score with their block. Texas is looking for its ninth appearance in the championship match. San Diego is looking to get there for the very first time. A punch out of the middle, it was not touched. The swing by Layla Blackwell. That ball set too low and Blackwell just could not get on top of it. Serve is long by Maddie Skinner. And it was really fun to talk to Zoe Fleck yesterday, the Libero for Texas. And we asked her, because we saw there were a couple of sets in the regional, in the regional semifinal, in the regional final, where they lost focus a little bit. And we said, Zoe, what is kind of the key to getting back on track for this team? And she said, we have to focus on the present. What is this next touch going to look like? Don't look ahead and don't look back. And I love the maturity of Zoe Flack and bringing that back to the team. She connects with all her teammates between each play, and it's fun to watch that kind of leadership, being present in the moment. You can't change the past. Be present. Katie, I thought it was really interesting, too, how she takes some of that pressure off of Sage, Kahai, and Atora as the setter to know what each player on the floor needs and kind of be that leader on the floor. Well, oftentimes, Courtney, your setter is the one who's emotionally checking in on everybody, making sure they have what they need. Hey, are you good? Do you need me to go away from you for a set so you can gain your composure? Sage has got a lot on her plate. She's got a plethora of weapons to choose from. She's trying to run an efficient offense. She's also, mind you, trying to break down the defense on the opposite side. That's a lot for one person to handle. So having a mature veteran libero like Zoe Fleck kind of take that responsibility from you so you can focus on what's most important is, is massive. And there's Fleck with the ace, too. Zoe Fleck is the third best server in terms of aces. 
In this NCAA tournament, ace there going at Katie Lukes for San Diego. It's just the first ace for Texas. Zoe Fleck, of course, transferring in from UCLA, where she was the two-time Pac-12 Libero of the Year, now the Big 12 Libero of the Year. It's coming over. Phillips ate it up. Everything going Molly Phillips' way. She got two over pass, over dig opportunities, and she is taking advantage. Open net there and termination for Texas. So you're telling me she hasn't cooled off after hitting 600 in the second set? No. <laughs> Service error by Fleck. That ends a 3-0 run by the Longhorns. Katie Luke's on the swing, blocked by Texas. Froling didn't have a chance to get a full swing on that ball. Texas doing a better job, as Jared Elliott said, blocking with their hands. That means going and getting that ball, making sure you're pressing on the other side of the net. Luke's on the readjustment. Froling will set. Logan Eggleston, seven kills. Transition offense after the dig from Emma Halter, the freshman number two in white. And Logan Eggleston finding her game. San Diego is going to call a timeout. Texas trying to pull ahead here in set number three. Look, we may be biased because we have two setters on our broadcast team, but I think we've got some super setters in this national semifinals. In both of them, we're getting to see Sage, Kaha, Anna Torres, and Gabby Blossom. But coming up, you're going to get to see Rachel Fairbanks and Raquel Lothero. Yeah, they're three of the best, right? Three of them were conference setters of the year, and Rachel Fairbanks has 15 double doubles on the season and two triple doubles she's been impressive yeah she will attack out of the front row so you'll get to see her coming up playing for pitt in our second semi-final that'll happen 30 minutes after this match is finished jen petri telling her players guys they may be lulled into complacency because they think they have us right now now is the time to strike back the best way to do that is for frawling to go on a run with her serve Let's see if they can catch texas Luke's up by Akana. SKT with the dump. Luke's again off of the hands of Sage. Katie Luke's attacking that outside hand of the blocker, Sage Kahina Torres. And now Eggleston gets to attack at Gabby Blossom because Jared Elliott spun the dial for a different matchup. Yeah, spinning the dial, meaning you can start in any rotation. You can start a set in any rotation that you want to. So sometimes coaches will try to play matchups. Definitely. And most of these coaches are very confident in their entire lineups and don't spin the dial. They feel like they can match up wherever they are. Tipped over by Stoner. Haley Stoner. She's so dynamic from behind the setter. We see a lot of power down that line, but that one just a tip to the middle works. Perfect pass by Fleck. Back over to Texas. O'Neal with the tip, big ball, one-handed layout. Fleck with the dive. Here comes Skinner down the line. Zoe Fleck started that playoff with a fantastic dig in the middle of the court. 
Watch this while she comes all the way over from left back, lifts it enough so her setter can set either way. Able to score on that left pin. I think we're getting spoiled by both Libero play, both Libero's play tonight. Here comes Brianna Edwards. I haven't called her name in a moment. You know, we talked about the culture and how important that was to establish for Pitt, or excuse me, for San Diego in the spring. And they came up with pillars for the program. These are things that they talk about every single day. Jen Petri told us we use this language in practice. It's get on board, stay brave, always compete, and protect the team. And they really leaned on those when it got tough against Stanford in the regional final. And I think culture is really important. You need full buy-in in these players. You can tell the way they fight together. Both teams have really nice cultures right now. It's different, too, just having a phrase or a saying. It, it's one thing to incorporate it into everyday language so that when you get in that moment, it automatically goes to the forefront of your brain. You are hearing players talk about staying brave in the post-match press conference. And they talk about those pillars on and off the court every day. Certainly an opportunity for San Diego to use them here. Get her off the block, but it drops in a block for San Diego. How about seven in blue? Layla Blackwell, huge block in the middle. She takes up a lot of space defensively. And that's why it's so important for Sage to make sure she pushes that ball all the way to the antenna so that Maddie Skinner can try to go at Gabby Blossom in that right front spot. When she hangs it inside, she's going to run right into Layla. Skinner coming after it. Sage covering off the block. Phillips. Out. Credit the San Diego block doing a really nice job laterally putting pressure on the Texas blocker, attackers, excuse me. San Diego seventh in the nation in blocks per set. They are a big force at the net. Quickly to Bella Bergmark. Bella Bergmark doesn't get a lot of sets, but when she does, she has been very effective. And Sage Kahina Torres feeds her perfectly, tacking that wrist away. Well, she's really found her role talking about Bella Bergmark coming off the bench for Texas. Uh, SKT told us their setter that she knows the scout better than anyone and she works really hard to execute it coming in off the bench. And that's important. You want someone who's going to come in focused, knowing how to shut down the opponent. San Diego cutting it to two. Set number three will at least play four sets. Torero's won set number one, 28-26. We went extra points. And then Texas regrouped and won set two, 25-16. Okay, Logan Eggleston. Pretty gap set. You see the look on Logan Eggleston's face. She wants it. She's really good at this gap set because she has that natural crossbody swing down the line. There she attacks the seam. Logan Eggleston had four attacking errors in the first set. She hasn't had any since then. Still up by the Toreros. Did you see the set from Blossom? And it's wide. They're going to call San Diego in the net. Net violation trying to block that transition swing, and it was out. That's a break for Texas. A little scrappy cover play there. Watch this set. Gabby Blossom squats down to get underneath it. Grace. Throwing turns it just a bit too much. Yeah, she saw an opening down that line, but Zoe Fleck defensively right there putting the pressure on her. A little hesitation there. We already had the media timeout, so not going to the huddles just yet. 3-0 run for Texas. serve long by Zoe Fleck. That's the ninth service error for Texas. Yeah, Texas really knows they have to dial up their serve. San Diego passes extremely well, but they're missing 
A bunch of balls long. Halter handles that so well. Blocked by San Diego. Haley Stoner, eight in blue, gets there late, but Molly Phillips was attacking into that angle. And it pays off for Stoner, number eight in the middle, who gets there with her hands. 17 blocks for San Diego. Texas with eight. Augusta is a soft touch. Here comes Katie Lukes. Halter sending it to the sky right on top of Sage's head. We talk a lot about Zoe Fleck, but what about Emma Halter? Emma Halter is fearless. She's been pa passing fantastic for Texas. Look at that dig, lifts it right on top of the net. Sage Kahaina Torres can go anywhere, but goes to Logan Eggleston on that left pin and kind of in that gap. Lukes finds a spot on the back row. Katie Lukes now five kills. She's trying to dig herself out of hitting negative. Who needs to hit it when you can just throw it? Yep. <laughs> this is the rotation for Texas. Setter is front row. Logan Eggleston will be on that left pin attacking against Gabby Blossom. Look for the ball to go there. There it goes. Logan Eggleston looks way more comfortable. Settled those nerves and has been way more effective since that first set. Yeah, she started with four errors in set number one. Since then, nine kills, no errors. Her fourth service error today. Look, Logan Eggleston has carried a big load since she arrived in Texas. Graduated high school in three years from Brentwood High School in Nashville, Tennessee. Came to Texas at 17 years old. Has been a three-time Big 12 Player of the Year, a five-time All-American. She's definitely a candidate for National Player of the Year this year, but she hasn't had that national title. It's the one thing missing for her. And this Texas team wants it for her. They know how bad she wants it. And sometimes when you want something that bad, you get out of the present. So I'm guessing that's what Coach Jared Elliott was talking to her about. Yeah, there's a great, yeah, there's a great article on Logan on ESPN.com, and she talks about how much she's trusting the pieces around her, and she loves this team. And that's helped take some of that pressure off. How about Asia O'Neill getting an ace of her own? She gets up and pops that ball, attacking the scene between two players. There's her dad, Jermaine O'Neal. Of course he'd be in attendance, right? National semifinal for Asia O'Neal, who is coming back to play another season for Texas. We see him in almost every game. What a support system. We talk about the well-rounded nature of each of these teams and how good the defense has been. Zoe Fleck with 15 digs in this match already, and we're in set number three. Zoe Fleck does the work. Extra reps, whatever it takes to make her team great. She talked about, look, I don't score points, but I can definitely help my team scoring points by keeping the ball off the floor. She said coming to Texas, the standard was higher than it's ever been with this program. I mean, their their expectation is to win a national championship every every year. And she said, I fell right into that. I love the culture here. I love the peace that I can bring to Texas. And, and she loves the teammates that she's playing with. Because they all want to be great. And she's a learner. She loves to push herself, get outside her comfort zone. And she's been getting better as a player. She said one of the keys for her when she was looking for a school was the level in the gym. How good were the attackers? because she said, I want to insert myself into a gym where I'm going against the best hitters every day because it's only going to make me better. 
want to remind you, Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC, catch the women's college basketball. It's number two, Stanford hosting Tennessee. Again, coming up 3 Eastern on Sunday over on ABC, and of course on that ESPN app. Asia O'Neill coming off that service ace. Edwards using the block. She's been really smart with that. Sage Kahaina Torres, the right side blocker for Texas, can be a little bit more disciplined with her hands. She's getting used an awful lot. Kind of in the same way that Texas is trying to go after Gabby Blossom, the setter for San Diego. The smaller block. Alex Hogland in to serve. Setters front row for Texas. They've got Logan Eggleston available out of the back row. Skinner. Out. Alex Hogland is the server who came in for San Diego and went on a 6-0 run to close out that fifth set against Stanford in that regional final. She has it in her to go on massive runs when they need it. Yeah, no fear in that moment for Hogland. Just long. I think I might have jinxed her. Yeah, that's your fault, Katie. I'll raise my hand on that. <laughs> and the hot hitter for Texas comes back into the game, Molly Phillips. And Phillips was key in their second set win, hit 600, had six kills. Number 15 in white. The block! No slide today. Bella Bergmark, number five in white, and Maddie Skinner Bergmark off the portal. She was at University of California. Late press, close of the seam, and it pays off. Now one of those six transfers that Texas brought in this season. There she goes again, back to back. Bella Bergmark is so good at getting there. Even if she's late, she works with her hands to get them up in a defensive position, pressed back into the court for Texas. San Diego, no timeouts remaining in this set. They've already used them. Tipped over right in the middle of the floor by Blackwell. It was obvious that ball was dug over the net, and I'm not sure why Texas wasn't low and ready for that to come back at them. Some serving Skinner, and she has trouble with the pass. Blossom going right at Maddie Skinner, putting some pressure on her and serve receive. It's the third ace for Gabby Blossom. Birdmark with the shoulder save. Molly Phillips, get it! Hey, it's important to use your whole body. That time, Bergmark covered herself with a little shoulder bump, and Molly Phillips ends it on that left pin. What a luxury to have Bergmark coming in off the bench. Even the tiniest little plays are going to make such a big difference in the semifinals. High ball to Edwards into the net. Set point, Texas. Maddie Skinner gets San Diego out of system, and then an unforced air right there. They make Luke's pass it, Blackwell in the middle. Blossom to Edwards. No! Bella Birdmark! Excuse me! You never know who that impact player is going to be, and everybody needs to be ready to step up. Bella Birdmark, number five in white, stepping up huge defensively for Texas.
Texas ending on a 3-0 run. What a turnaround it has been for the Longhorns after dropping the first set for only the fifth time this season. The number one team in the nation, one set win away from the championship match. Texas Longhorns, the number one overall seed, regrouping after loss in set number one. They've won back-to-back -back sets here. Want to let you know about a cool experience we have for you over on ESPN Plus. It's an alternate match experience. You can check out the high end zone coverage. So the main angle that you're going to watch the match from is our high end zone camera. This is how coaches watch film. So what a great opportunity. By the way, I've already got two notes that people are loving that alternate viewing option. Again, you can see that on ESPN Plus. We'll have it for both of these semifinal matches and also the championship match on Saturday. Courtney Lyle, Holly McPeak, and Katie George with you from Omaha. A win for Texas in this set, and they advance to the final. San Diego has to win this set in order to force a fifth. Maddie Skinner swing is long. You know, guys, Jim Petrie was telling her team, Texas has done a really nice job with their outsides moving them inside on a 31 or a rip and then sending them back out into the antenna. They're moving a lot. She told Grace Frawling, you got to do a better job tracking them. You got to make sure you line up and dive inside. She said, if we play smarter, we can make this a really long match. And forcing that block to really think. And back-to-back -back airs for Texas offensively. They had a really slow start. Texas hit .056 in the first set, but since then they hit 319. Blossom with the service pressure. Fleck has to dive for it, and then the winning at the net by San Diego. Three errors in a row offensively, but credit San Diego with the tough defense and the adjustments at the net. Blossom serve has been on tonight. Three aces, two in this match. Tipped over by Phillips. Froling. Hands and pass black. Grace Froling. I love the way Grace Froling gets her feet inside to that ball because when she gets her feet there, she is long and can hit with range down that line. Look at the Toreros go. They are out to a 4 nothing lead here in what's a must-win set for San Diego. Grace Froling, the opposite for San Diego, established herself early, but it's been quiet. She has seven kills, two blocks on the night, and she has a good start in the set. Grace Froling, a second team All-American. San Diego, four straight points to start set number four. Melanie Parra has been inserted into the match for Texas, and she's going to get the Longhorns their first point. She just gets one swing and goes out of the game, but instant kill for Texas. We talked about the depth that Texas has, and they've worked on different situations to get ready for moments like this when they need somebody to step up. Here's Maddie Skinner. Nice pass by Benbo. They can go to the middle with Blackwell. Eggleston is blocked. Breonna Edwards and Layla Blackwell are so good defensively blocking next to each other. They are a San Diego wall. Look at how big and high over the net they are. It's a wall that travels to all the way to Omaha. Against San Diego, seventh in the nation in blocks per set. Holly Phillips. Tight pass to the net. Rolling with the set to Lukes. Sage Eggleston. Blossom to the middle. Phillips down the line, there's Bimbo. Eggleston adjusts and goes at Blossom. 
Amazing rallies of free ball opportunity for the Longhorns. Molly Phillips is over it. San Diego had so many good defensive block touches to stay in that rally, but they couldn't turn it into a swing. Texas does off this free ball. Handled by Luke's here. She gets the swing. Take two. Off the hands for Katie Luke's. Skill number six. Katie Luke's knows she's going to go extra, right? Have to take more swings than just one to put it away. That time, flat and high off that big block of Texas. And what a heady play, right? The first swing, she goes right into the block. They're able to cover out of it. And the next one, she adjusts just a couple inches to go high hands to get that kill. And she's coming off a season high performance too against Stanford. She had 20 kills. So important in that regional final when they push Stanford a number one seed to five sets. Texas going so fast to Molly Phillips and she is scoring. 13 kills for Molly Phillips, the sixth time this season that she's had double figure kills. She's one away from tying her career high. Luke's blocked by O'Neill. Point Texas. Katie Luke's almost covered herself back in play. But she's not getting tentative. She's staying aggressive on that swing. They're forcing her to pass a lot, too. Now it falls on the Texas side. It's interesting. Gabby Blossom going to Katie Luke's on the left. Not sure why they're not setting Grace Froling more on that right side. Why do you want to see Froling more on the right? Well, because she's unstoppable. Yeah, well, that's true. Froling helped them get out to a really nice start in this fourth set, along with a nice serving run for like Gabby Blossom. Texas has made an adjustment. They're setting that ball inside, and Logan Eggleston's so good. If she's got room to attack down the line, she will take it. And heads up play, too, recognizing who the defender was and Frawling coming off of that serve. It's going back over. Sage Kahina Torres to the backcourt. The overpass kill. Sometimes those are nerve-wracking, right? Yeah. They're hanging up there. Everybody's watching. Sometimes you don't make great hand contact. She kind of had a little wonky hand contact, but still goes in for Texas. Spent three seasons at Utah. Was a two-time honorable mention All-American at Utah before coming to Texas for the 2021 season and now taking over this offense here. Logan Eggleston scores an ace from the service line. And that's her first one tonight. She's the Big 12 career leader in service aces, but had a handful of errors before she could get to that one. A 5-1 to one run by Texas has tied this fourth setup. Oh. Luke's attack hits the antenna. Katie Luke's trying to attack down that line. And San Diego's going to call a timeout. Texas has taken the lead after San Diego led early on in this set 4 nothing. Texas offensive numbers are way down, 0 0.071 in this set. Looks way more like the first set, which is good for San Diego. But San Diego's numbers only 0 0.077, a little better. A win for Texas in this set. They move on to the championship match. San Diego's got to win this fourth set to force a fifth set. Reminder too, 30 minutes after this match concludes, we'll have our second semifinal. It'll be Pitt and Louisville, two teams that were at the national semifinals last year for the first time. What have you liked most about San Diego? They've really pushed Texas here in set four. I like their size at the net. I feel like they can 
neutralize Texas offense at times, but then Gabby Blossom gets to the front row and Texas really exploits it. We saw them, as you mentioned, go away from Grace Froling a little bit. Katie Luke's carrying such a heavy load. We see Texas is serving her too. She's having to pass a lot. Yeah, and you want to load up someone like Katie Luke's and make her pass and work for her approach and try and hit with range around the big size of Texas at the net. Luke's seven kills, but she's hitting zero. Does have three digs, excuse me, four digs and three blocks tonight. Four straight points for Texas. Logan Eggleston stepping back to serve once again. Luke's jamming it into the block. And that's why San Diego is going out to that left pin. They want to attack Sage Kahaina Torres, the setter and right side blocker for Texas. I talked about it earlier, SKT needs to be more disciplined with her hands. She's high enough to be a more effective blocker for Texas. Lukes is gonna rotate to the back row to serve for San Diego. Asia O'Neill on the slide. Off of the block, it was touched by Stoner. Skinner over the block, the dive in by Olivia Bennett. They'll try to slide again. Stoner tipping. Zoe Fleck got there somehow. Eggleston is blocked. Skinner off hands. There was a play in the middle that Zoe Fleck dug a deflection. Actually, it was a power tip. But look at the coverage. One arm stab by Skinner and then in transition, high corner off the hands. Texas working hard to win that rally. We have had some scrappy rallies all night. Digs are tied, by the way, 46 digs for each of these teams. Edwards again rolling it. Riona Edwards can bring the heat and the defense back on their heels. I would be too. And then the little short finesse shot over the block drops. Edwards has 12 kills to lead the Toreros. service error. San Diego's offense has struggled tonight. They're just hitting 085. This is a team that's seventh in the nation in hitting percentage. Yeah, on the average, they hit 292, and they're hitting under 100. They push it to Edwards, looking for the angle, will not get the touch, and Texas takes the point. Short serve, forcing Gabby Blossom to get under and push that ball wide. Trying to make her job hard tonight. SKT with the up. Birdmark pushes it over. Blossom's going with her middle and Blackwell, yes! Touch there, kind of a scary moment when Maddie Skinner was going to hit that ball. Bella Bergmark right under her, but good body control. Nobody got hurt. Here comes Blossom back behind the service line. Remember, she started out this set on a great run. It was San Diego leading 4 0. Backside, rolling back on the court. Just not afraid of that Texas block. No, but in my opinion, San Diego needs to use number 11 in blue, Grace Froling. She can dominate and score points from them, and we are not calling her number enough, in my opinion. Froling eight kills. She is hitting just under 100. Coming over. Edwards took it. Blackwell trying to turn it just a little bit too much. And now the hitting errors that we saw from Texas in the first set are happening to San Diego in this fourth must-win set. 
Gabby Blossom over talking to our up official, Michelle Prater. She's the floor captain, the only player that can approach that up official, that R1 position. They see the positive talk from Blossom to her team. Throwing this time, she's on the left side in this rotation. Eggleston had to chase it, it's gonna be long. Good dig by Texas. Logan Eggleston has been hitting that angle with such nice range, just doesn't get on top of it inside the block. Tied up at 12, Maddie Allen back in. Bergmark! The connection between Bergmark and Sage Kahina Torres is really nice. SKT just hangs it up there for Bergmark, who comes in and gets on top of it. Now, how easy is it for a settled setter to adjust when you have a late insertion into the match, like Bergmark coming in off the bench? Well, Texas does a good job getting everybody reps, so they're versatile and they can make adjustments in game. And when we were talking with Texas players yesterday after practice, you saw their faces light up talking about Bella Bergmark and the job that she's done in this NCAA tournament. Jared Elliott told us, maybe if I had started her in a national semifinal, her eyes would have gotten really big. She's just done a really nice job with the mindset of coming in off the bench. And there's some players that just play that role so well, and it works for Bergmark. Asia O'Neal turning it. Well, the hang time by Asia O'Neal, seven in white, and then a little crossbody swing attacking that right back position. She spent some time with USA Volleyball that has really helped her grow as a player. A first team All-American was an honorable mention All-American last season. There's Froling. Cool power down the line right at Fleck. Eggleston with the tip. Dive by Blossom. Texas forcing Gabby Blossom, the right back defender to try and dig that ball. That means someone else will have to set it. <laughs> Allen sends it up forward. There's Lukes. That's when Katie Lukes is at her best. That super fast ball and Gabby Blossom. That's the one skill she's really worked on, that fast offense, and the location is perfect. Luke's one of those two fifth-year players for San Diego. Annie Benbow is the other one, the Libro. They are best friends, by the way. The two veterans on the team. Just a bit wide for Logan Eggleston. That was actually in. Logan Eggleston oh, caught me. that line, and she's very comfortable hitting the line. If you're San Diego, you might want to try and take that away from her and have her attack somewhere else. But she's running that set inside, which makes it hard for the block to stay wide. Rolling just enough out of the back row, and it's a net violation on Texas. Still very tight in this set. San Diego wants to try and open it up and put some surface pressure on Texas. Texas in a two-hitter rotation, but Logan Eggleston can hit out of the back row. It's kind of how it felt in that first set. We had 21 ties in set number one, and San Diego ended up winning at 28-26. Here comes Skinner. Edwards, Skinner saved it with one hand, and there is a pile in the middle of the court for Texas. They'll try Brianna Edwards again. What a rally for Texas. Almost everyone was piled on the floor, and they regrouped.
That was incredible. The effort, bodies flying, everybody looking to focus on the ball. And then Maddie Skinner, exclamation point, and the celebration. I love the celebration from assistant coach or associate head coach Eric Sullivan. He was fired up after that defensive play. Did you just see the intensity in Maddie Skinner's face coming off of that kill? The urgency, knowing what's coming if they're able to close out this set four. She's the only one on the floor that's won a national championship. She knows how to get it done. And she did it in this arena, Katie, two years ago, playing for Kentucky in 2020. The tournament was here in Omaha. No fans, so a different environment. But one's not enough. Maddie Skinner wants another ring. In the airs offensively, 29 for San Diego. That's too many. Maddie Skinner leading Texas right now. We've seen different weapons step up at different times. It's her time to shine right now, 15 kills. 15 kills and three blocks, and she's benefiting from that mismatch at the net. Gabby Blossom, the smaller blocker on the court for San Diego in front of her, and she is going after her. Maddie not the only volleyball player in her family. Her sister, Avery, was an All-American at Kentucky and then transferred over to Baylor, got to play together at Kentucky, but they said they talk all the time. Avery's playing over in France right now. And they're very close. How has Texas been able to regroup here in this set? I mean, it was, the momentum was with San Diego right from the start of set four. Yeah, it's interesting. I think they just weathered the storm, right? San Diego is a very good team and they're gonna make good plays, but I feel like defensively, Texas was able to stay in rallies and win some long rallies. Usually San Diego was winning those earlier. San Diego, though, not going anywhere yet. They're just down by three points. The Toreros do have to win this set in order to force a fifth. And the San Diego team was down in the fourth set against Stanford in a big match and came up strong. And that was on Stanford's home court, too. San Diego has never been to the championship match, making their first appearance here in the semifinal. Texas has been to that championship match eight times. Stoner on the slide. She takes it off Texas's block. San Diego responds, good in-system play, and Haley Stoner is so good at this slide. Off one foot, block is there and late. She goes off Bergmark's hands. In comes Alex Hogland. Very capable of leading the Toreros on a run. Flex setting up Skinner with the bump. Brianna Edwards, in! Incredible how Gabby Blossom pushes the pace. That set, or that first contact was behind the three meter line, and she works to get under it and push it with pace to Edwards on the pin. Well, Katie, you were talking about her out of system setting it is so good and it's been really important for San Diego. Well, you would think about from a serving standpoint, you've done your job as they get a nice block there from Texas at the net. You would think you've done your job in most cases. You've broken down a pass. You've got San Diego out of system. But Gabby Blossom is an eraser in that factor because she can get there with her fast feet and she can keep this offense in system time and time again. It's an X factor in what makes her so good at what she does. She continues to put up hittable balls for her hitters. That's what Jennifer Petrie told us was her biggest strength was her out of system setting. Skinner just seems to step up when Texas needs a kill. She's doing a really job getting to the balls no matter where they are coming from. But Zoe Fleck got under that ball, even though the set came from way off the net. Look at Maddie Skinner. Get her feet there and on top of that ball. Skinner with 16 kills, Fleck with 20 digs. Fifth time this season, she's gone over 20. To the court, Layla Blackwell. The middles for San Diego are very good offensively, and Blackwell can hit in front or behind the setter. As 
SKT going Skinner on the right pin. And it drops. She's got all the shots. Grace Froling ran all the way across that court to pop it up, but nobody else there to get that second ball. Texas four points away from the championship match. Blossom on the new move, rolling readjusts. SKT falling to her knees to set Eggleston. Take two out, point to Eros. We saw Logan Eggleston hitting that angle consistency at the regional final, but missing it a couple times wide. San Diego's front row is huge blocking wise. Phillips will take him on. Molly Phillips, who hit 600 and had six skills in set number two. They run that ball so fast to Molly Phillips that she's able to work outside the block, and that's tough to defend. Blossom reversing flow, going to Froling. Tipped by Eggleston, she wants a touch call, will not get it. Toreros get the point. I actually thought there was a touch on the block, Logan Eggleston. And we're gonna have a challenge. Second time tonight that Texas has challenged. They were correct in their first challenge. Looked like it might have got the right hand of number seven in blue, Blackwell. The original call was no touch, point San Diego. Let's see this angle. See a little finger movement on that right hand ring finger. Well, I think you see it right there. Is it enough, though, for them to overturn this? Well, quick decision, we'll see. They overturn the call, they do see the touch. Texas gets to keep its challenge, and they get that point, two points away from Saturday. Just one blocker in front of her. Perfect pass, and Layla Blackwell one on one. Able to score. She's tough to stop. Blossom trying to get underneath it. It is match point, Texas. Sends San Diego scrambling. Sage to Eggleston. Championship hope still alive for the Longhorns. Moving on to Saturday. I thought that was a really good test for Texas. San Diego came out ready to fight. And that's a good sign for Texas that they were able to respond under pressure. 
How big is it, too, that Logan Eggleston, who came out, she had four attacking errors in the first set, three service errors, struggled. She's been able to turn it around, and she gets the kill to send them to the championship match. It had to be that way, right? I mean, she's their leader. This team wants to win it for her, and she made that adjustment after a really rough start tonight. We've seen it time and time again since their only loss this season against Iowa State. When Texas is in trouble, they learned how to weather the storm, and they were definitely tested tonight. They were, and they had other players step up. We saw Molly Phillips lighting things up, and then Bella Bergmark was a huge defensive spark. Some of the players we're not used to talking about because there are so many stars on this Texas team. It's going to be three players with double-figure kills tonight for Texas. Maddie Skinner leading the way with 17, Logan Eggleston with 16 kills, and then Molly Phillips with 14. And Texas is going to the championship match for the ninth time. Katie has Coach Elliott. Thanks, Courtney. Coach Elliott, first and foremost, congratulations. Little bit of a rocky start in set one, but then a very complete performance. What impressed you most? Well, I thought we did a great job in the service line after game one. And then we really started getting a lot of touches and controlling the ball and getting good transition swings. We weren't great in transition uh, for a lot of points with Logan, but we, we started figuring out, and I'm glad that she ended the match with that last swing. The expectations at Texas are always so high. Why is this team ready and primed to win a national title? They're super tight and they believe in each other and they can look each other in the eye and make sure they know that they do it. They could have folded after game one and they stuck together on that. Congratulations. Enjoy this moment. Thank you. Jared Elliott has said he trusts this team. They know what they have to do. They weathered the storm tonight and Texas is in the national championship match for the ninth time in program history, the first time since 2020. Congratulations to San Diego on an amazing season, making their first appearance in the national semifinal. But it is Texas advancing. It was a tough one for the Longhorns, but they will play for a national title on Saturday. Who will join them? Don't leave us in Omaha. More coverage from the national semifinals coming up.